I have to say, this was actually the most technically difficult part of the whole show for me, was holding up these <laughs> melons. They're huge, and my hands are so small. And I was like, I'm barely handling this. But it looks very smooth. Hi, I'm Cinco Paul. And I'm Gov Cameron. And, and this, this is Notes on, on a scene. scene. Look, Betsy, I feel like it's a good time to set some ground rules in terms of what's gonna happen between us tonight. What, Dr. Skinner? What makes you think anything's gonna happen between us? You know, I think you have the wrong idea about me. Wow, the, the idea came when I was watching American Werewolf in London, of all movies, and it opens with the two guys backpacking through the wilderness, and I thought, wow, the opening to this movie is exactly like the opening to Brigadoon. And I thought, what if these two guys, instead of finding a werewolf, found a musical? <laughs> Look, Betsy, I feel like it's a... In this scene, there's just been a big well picnic basket auction. Of... Keegan-Michael Key has bid on Dove's basket, and so now they're off on their little date. Let's, Let's press, press play. play. <laughs> I feel like it's a good time to set some ground rules in terms of what's gonna happen between us tonight. What, Dr. Skinner? One thing we talked about in the writer's room early on was what are the rules about singing? For me, I felt it was really important that no one in Schmigadoon knows that they're singing, mm. right? And that's what I've always felt musicals are, that musicals just magically translate what to the characters would be just normal dialogue into song and dance and all those things. And so music is playing, and generally the Schmigadoonians don't notice it and don't react to it, but Keegan, because he's an outsider, he knows. He hears, he hears the little music there. Can I? Oh, what do you cute! What do you think about that? Oh, it's sort of spread. That's so there. cute. Yeah, yeah, he's hearing the little notes. I love that. What makes you think anything's gonna happen between us? You know, I think you have the wrong idea about me. I always thought of Betsy as more of an idea than a human. Because I think that the whole idea, you know, that's that whole thing, like, I was written by a man. Like, Betsy's whole aura is that she is like an amalgamation of all of those sort of like early ideas about women in musicals that weren't women, they weren't people, they were ideas. So many of these musicals, I think in Brigadoon, there's this character called Meg. Yeah, right. And in Oklahoma, there's Ada Annie. And it was always the secondary female character that was allowed to be lusty. It was interesting, they never wanted the lead to like have any sexual feelings or no, be aggressive. No, because that's the princess that we marry. Right. And then there's the fantasy that we fantasize Right, about. so yeah. we're certainly playing with that trope here. And then also, the, yeah, the fact that actresses who were not in their teens were playing teenagers, yeah. which could be very confusing to a Keegan. Right. Who doesn't know like, Because she's an assumes... actress in her 20s playing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. playing someone who's p potentially. <laughs> Much younger. Of the girls flirt and talk romance Soon as they see a pair of pants I need to clarify something just for everybody because <laughs> Dove is singing live Aww. here. This is live on the set and she is so flawless Aww. that you might think she's lip syncing. It was really important to me that everybody sang live on the set. And that's why we wanted people like Dove. There is a lot of necessity as the mother of invention in this because <laughs> to me it's a great joke that we just cut to her and suddenly that's she's on the blanket. That's what I was going to say. That is so stupid. It gets me every time. <laughs> that's one of my favorite like, jokes in this scene. And no one really comments on it and it's the funniest thing. And it happened because originally <laughs> in the script it's like, oh, Betsy sets out the blanket yeah. as she's singing and yeah. Barry was like, no, nah, this is going to be too hard to do. Yeah, yeah, he was like, we don't have time. Yeah, we don't have time. <laughs> and then I said, well, let's just have it set up and it'll be stupid. funny. Yeah. yeah, and it's so stupid funny because it's like literally he looks up for one second and then suddenly she has this like elaborate And she's just laid out. out there perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. When the sun goes down, they let them moral slide. But I'm going to wait till I'm a bride. Was that you? Was yes, that your addition? Yes, I have no idea why I did that. And I can't believe you let me keep it in. It was perfect, because she's, you know, she's, she, she's a church bells are ringing. Lady. Yeah, exactly. It's appropriate. I'm very much a stickler for when we're on the set and the camera's rolling, you should say what's on the page. So I was a stickler in that way, although Cecily and Keegan would play around a lot at the end. But of course, things like that, you know, yeah. gestures and, and all those sort of choices were totally open to whatever you wanted to do. And, and yeah. that was a great choice. <laughs> That's great to hear, Betsy, because here's the thing. You are way too young. Other girls like to show their skin. Getting a boy's mind set on sin. So that's a good place to pause. Um, 
there was discussion <laughs> about like is that too much? Which yeah. direction that the melons, I, which parts of the melons should be facing out? I don't even remember doing that. Someone from props came and like adjusted them and said like, Dove, could you perhaps face? I don't. What part of the melon is that even called? <laughs> whatever it is, they instructed we, her to do that. Whatever it was, we to did. To great effect. We did it to great yes. effect. Get a boy's mind set on sin. When I first started talking to um, our lovely hair makeup wardrobe department, mm -hmm. the inspiration was like a very specific photo of Bridget Bardot. I chose that one. It was this great one of her w with the pigtails. It's kind of this iconic picture of Bridget. Yeah, yeah. And she's got the two little like ribbons, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the amazing thing about Schmigadoon is that these are all characters that are like in the zeitgeist, like the cultural zeitgeist of all of our minds. So when I read it, the vision was clear, and I think that was the same for everybody. So then, like, the more that we like leaned into these like super broad, over the top, like characters that we all know and love, it just became more and more brilliant. Well, I think you have to embrace the tropes before you smash them. Yes, agreed. And so that was really what the show was all about. Betsy went to 11. Right. <laughs> and then we ripped her apart. Yeah. Yes, yes. Willing to do things that I have never tried. You know, I didn't know this was going to happen until I showed up for rehearsal. No, but I just remember him being like, Chris being like, okay, so we're going to, this is what you're going to be pulling out. And I remember dying laughing. <laughs> Like up in the little like production room upstairs, as he's like, and what do you think about like just like a big sausage? <laughs> this I is Chris like, Catelli, the choreographer. Yes, yeah, our choreographer who's brilliant. And I remember that morning, you know, you have props come in and they've got all this produce, and yeah. so I I had the job of choosing the melons. Yeah, and, and we were choosing, choosing the salami. <laughs> the salami. We had so many different. We were like, is it is it like sausage links? Like, is she just pulling out like an endless like like clowns pull out like scarves that just like never yeah. end? And then we like, nah, it's got to be like a massive. Just ludicrous. The most suggestive possible. Yeah. To make Keegan's character as uncomfortable as possible. I have never tried, cause I'm gonna wait till I'm a bride. This just kept getting more and more ridiculous. We would shoot it, and then you'd hear Barry go, take longer. <laughs> but from like the very back, like, this was a practical hill that we were on, by the way. And it's a very steep climb, actually, to get up there. Yeah. It's, it's a little it's, scary up there. It's all we were on like a football field sized soundstage. It was yeah, yeah. Huge with a real like forest behind us. But and a stream. Oh, all that is to say <laughs> that for so much of these scenes, Barry would be like miles away. And you'd hear his note be like, Take longer <laughs> slower and Keegan was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, It's okay, just don't look me in the eyes when I'm doing this. Yeah, I felt I felt bad about that. Oh my but god, we were... no, it's fine. Listen, I'm an adult now. Listen. Okay, hey. yeah. <laughs> also, the pie was like so um, tasty. <laughs> oh, it was. Was it, it was good? It was so good. They did bake. I mean, these were real pies. Yeah. All the baked goods were real and delicious. And and all the meat was real. <laughs> I will say. Willing to do things that I have never tried. Cause I'm gonna wait till I'm a bride. I never wanted to write a song that actually wouldn't have been sung in one of those old MGM musicals. I didn't want to put modern jokes yeah. in, you know, for the sake of getting a laugh. So I really wanted all the songs to sincerely feel like they were real musical theater songs. And they do. But as far as performance wise. The one thing in a comedy as, you know, specific as our show is that you have to play the character straight. Like you have to play them with levity and with joy to bring that sort of level of fantasy but you can't play them like they know that they're a character because then you're not watching real people. And that's what's yeah. funny is that you, these people are really in this town. They really are these characters. Yes, and also this. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Don't give us markers. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of getting some mixed messages. You sort of have this picture in your head of what you want it to be, and then you bring in people like Dove and then like the rest of our cast, like Kristen and Alan and Alan. Jane, and all these people that elevate everything they touch, you know? Yeah. And, and it becomes just beyond what was in my wildest dreams, I have to say. That makes me so happy that you feel that way because it was yeah. so important to all of us that we executed your vision in the way that you saw it because you know the reason that so many amazing performers were drawn to this project is because of what you wrote it was this amazing sort of magic environment that you and Barry created and that we all just kind of like jumped into and you can really see how much we loved it we loved the project we loved each other like I think that's really the joy that 
that you see on the screen is how happy we were to be doing this. Yeah, I mean, so the terminology that you hear in the industry is everybody knew the assignment. And we, uh, yeah, I think we're very proud of this.